It's a new dawn for South Korean politics after last month's general elections. The last National Assembly was seen as disappointing and unproductive, with physical scuffles, bills held up and public opinion falling. However, with the political lines with redrawn and new lawmakers elected, there are renewed expectations for the 21st National Assembly. In light of this, starting today, we'll meet a couple of new emerging Korean politicians to discuss local politics as well as the future they are hoping to create. Joining us in the studio today is a lawmaker elect Kang Sonu of the ruling Democratic Party, who won in Seoul's Gangsa A district last month. We'll talk to her about her journey into Korean politics, her vision, the problems of the Korean National Assembly, as well as solutions. Ms. Kang, welcome to the show today. Oh, thanks for having me. First, I'd like to congratulate you on your win. It's been <laughs> almost a month now. You've had mm -hmm. some time to process it all. How does it feel? Um, it's been pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been so busy and at the same time um, I'm so grateful and I'm telling myself every single day that mm. um, you should do my best, you should you should do your best and um, listen to the citizens voice more carefully uh, with your heart. So it's been busy at the same time grateful and happy and a little bit worried. Too. <laughs> <laughs> How does a newly elected mm -hmm. lawmaker prepare uh -huh. before they go into the National Assembly? Um, I believe um, for my case, like um, locational representatives, um, there are two big things. Um, the first thing is preparing um, some, um, I mean, organizing, I mean, organizing um, um, new packet for the district. For mm. me, it is Gangseo mm. A district and another big thing is preparing for the national assembly in Yeoido thing so um, I'm getting my team up mm. so um, um, mostly I'm spending time to setting my team for Yeoido so there are two things mainly going on right now. Yeah so a lot of preparation I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your race as well as you said you won in Seoul's Gangsa A district. Yes, what I do did. you think were the reasons you won? What do you attribute your win to? Mm, well, first of all, I would like to say thank you to the citizens of my Gangsa A district um, citizens. Um, my win is totally attributable to them. And um, to be frank with you, I am not even sure if I can call or say this win or victory. I truly think they gave me and they gave the Minju Party of Korea, an opportunity to work and also cope with this um, difficult time. And I and we will definitely follow that order and do our best to um, cope with this big transition. Um, if I have to find kind of reason within myself individually, mm -hmm. uh, well, um, I would like to say I really tried and did my best to interact with the citizens of Gangsa District A um, with my heart. Um, you know heart speaks to heart. Sure. And in the middle of my election campaign, um, the senior citizens in my district started to call my name. Sonuya, and <laughs> that is one of the most unforgettable moment for me. Um, right, right. It was really touching and grateful and all kind of mixture of emotions at that moment. And also I've heard that um, some children ask their parents to go out for a campaign to say hi and greet and <laughs> see me. And um, it really means the word mm. to me. Um, I'm not going to take it for granted. Um, I'm going to do my best sure. to listen to their voices and improve their livelihoods and also develop the district with great, great responsibility. Yes, I can't imagine what it must feel like. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself as well? Sure. You grew up in Korea, but then uh -huh. you, uh, after college, you went to the US for your doctorate degree, I understand, yes. mm -hmm. and eventually became an assistant professor right. at the South Dakota State University. Mm -hmm. Then what prompted you to return to Korea and become involved in mm -hmm. Korean politics? Um, well, my daughter was born with a very rare genetic disorder, and it also came with um, special needs as well. And I left for the States with my daughter, and my husband was 
here um, during 10 years. Mm. Um, in the States, myself, I was a social and also ethnic minority. I'm an Asian, mm. and also I was a single parent there because I was there by myself with my daughter. And um, I was a mom with a daughter with special needs. Um, however, I was able to pursue my PhD and also eventually I was able to become a assistant professor at South Dakota State University. And I do not contribute all of those accompli accomplishments to my hard work. I think behind that there was um, child care system, education system, and health care systems. So I really wanted to implement or take that system mm. to Korea for right, the okay. moms who are just like me. Right, yeah. so what you saw mm -hmm. in the US, mm -hmm. you wanted to bring that here to Korea. Yes. You felt that it wasn't in Korea back then especially, mm -hmm. that it didn't have that kind of support structure here in Korea. Mm -hmm. Right, mm. so that, that gave me this desire um, to help establish the same system here in Korea. And I thought I should become a politician to usher um, in this kind of change. Mm. So I came to that conclusion in 2016. And then I applied to join the Minjoo Party of Korea um, and went for a proportional representative seat at that time. And that's how my political career started. <laughs> and you felt the Minjoo Party, the Democratic mm -hmm. Party, uh, aligned with your beliefs as well then? Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you ran in the Gangseo A district. What mm -hmm. were some of the pledges you ran on? What are the pending issues for your region that you wanted to focus on as well? Mm, um, Gangseo district is the second largest and also second most populated um, district in Seoul. Uh, however, the living infrastructure is lacking and the main reason for that is um, the height restriction of buildings. Um, it is near Gimpo Airport. Mm. Um, and the Ministry of Land Infrastructure and Transport announced that it would lift this restriction and implement a new um, um, revised regulations with the ICAO International um, Civil Aviation Organization by 2026. However, as you know, six year is a very <laughs> long sure. time. So mm. uh, what I want to do is bring the plan forward by a year at least. And in relation to that, um, I'm going to discuss the uh, compensation for the citizens of my district uh, because they have been bearing this restriction for such a long time um, as the 21st National Assembly starts. And um, second, um, last year, the Seoul Metropolitan Government announced to um, build um, Seoul um, anna announced to anna announced its plan to build a Gangsa branch of um, Seoul Public Library under the name of um, Science and Environment. Okay. So my goal is to develop it into a cultural complex and also um, expedite the process. Um, last but not least, the development of Metro Rail um, is another important. Um, element to improve the livelihoods of citizens. Um, our citizens of Gangseo A district, they've been waiting for so long. Mm. So I'm going to pursue all of these projects um, with speed and also attention to the details for benefit of all. So yes, it sounds like you've really tapped into what the locals want mm -hmm. and try to improve their livelihoods and perhaps the quality of life in that region yes. as well. Yes, I do. What other bigger aims do you have also though for the uh, mm. National Assembly? Anything you want to tackle as a lawmaker? Mm. You talked about your yep. uh, mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. uh, especially with your family as well, mm -hmm. your daughter. Is those kind of things that you'd be interested in mm -hmm. uh, raising here when right. you go into the National Assembly? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, as we all know, we are going through a very, very difficult time now. And COVID-19 is posing an array of unprecedented challenges to the, I would say, whole world. Mm. And um, it's really changing the world as well. So just, just take a look at our everyday life. There's no mask on our faces before COVID-19, but mm. now we wear masks when we go out. Um, 
Right. So we need to prepare for the changes. And now the current welfare system focuses on equality based on universal welfare. Mm. But um, in the post-COVID-19 era, um, I believe the focus will move to um, coexistence and co-prosperity more heavily in that um, way. Uh, That means we have to strengthen our inclusiveness welfare. And that means um, the welfare system should cover every single one of the citizens Mm. in the country. Um, So we need to have new health and welfare system that better meets um, the needs of the time. Um, To that end, I would like to join the health and welfare committee. Right. And also okay. the Gender Equality and Family Committee as well. Um, I want to systemize contactless healthcare services, which are becoming a new norm these days, and also um, complement related laws as well. Um, I've already started communicating with experts in that field. Um, another key plan is. Um, I like to help establish or make a foundation for cradle to grave welfare system okay. that includes both concept of life cycle and life course. Um, traditionally, welfare system and kind of all other social systems um, uh, focused on life cycle mainly. However, we can have a better system by um, adding life course perspective as well. So I want to bring that perspective to our welfare system. And right. So it seems welfare and mm-hmm. social issues are very mm-hmm. uh, important to you yeah. and something you'll very much pursue in yeah. your time as a lawmaker. Mm-hmm. One of the issues, though, has been the fact that the National Assembly has been mm-hmm. seen as so ineffective recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, the previous mm-hmm. National Assembly, the 20th, mm-hmm. was seen as a very disappointing one. Mm-hmm. As we said, we saw mm-hmm physical scuffles among lawmakers due to contentious reform bills and that led to holding up of even non-contentious bills, bills Mm -hmm. that should have had easily bipartisan support. Mm -hmm. It was just very, a lot of undignified scenes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, What mm -hmm. would, what did you make of the 20th Assembly and what do you Mm -hmm. hope for Mm -hmm. for the 21st? Um, The, as you said, um, the 20th National Assembly, I think in one way it has handled many important pieces of legislation, but at the same time, um, bill processing rate stands at only 36.6%, and it's about 10% less than those of the 18th and 19th National Assembly. Um, This number itself will not be the absolute measure um, to evaluate their performance, but still, it is true that a large number of public welfare bills um, were neglected during the 20th National Assembly. Assembly. Mm. Um, I strongly believe that lawmakers are legislative workers, which means we have to work to earn our <laughs> salary. Mm. It's it's that simple. So in that regard, their performance leaves me with some disappointment and regret. I mean, mm. 20th National Assembly. Um, the 21st National Assembly has to take on the challenge of shaping a post-COVID-19 society. So our role will be critical uh, for Korea to adapt amid those big changes. I mean, huge, huge transition. Um, I'm going to absolutely, truly do my best thoroughly um, to observe the needs of the citizens and find out the best way to meet them through bills and other measures. So we should work. (laughs) Well, I hope that you, and I'm sure the Korean public will be hoping that you and your fellow loan workers can uh, do that. And we offer our support to you on those efforts. It's been Mm -hmm. a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you. We've been speaking to a lawmaker-elect, Kang son of the ruling Democratic Party. Thank you for making the time to come in today. Oh, thanks for having me today. 